Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you aboard today's flight with service to Self Love City. Please take a moment to provide us your full attention as we review the safety features on today's aircraft. Optimism, blessing, self-love locked in full upright position. Any and all self-destructive criticism and insecurity devices should be shut off at this time. Negativity, judgment, and pessimism should be stowed beneath your seat. Should we lose altitude for any reason, reach for positivity, optimism, and self-love. Once personally secured, share the love with those that mean the most for the duration of today's flight. We'd also like to remind you once again that there is no baggage allowed on this flight. Thank you so much. Prepare for impact. Who would ever imagine that a conversation, not even a conversation, one thought, one opinion, shared by my mother one evening would impact my love for myself, for the people around me, my relationships, my employment, my life. That 45 years later, I am here to share what that conversation looked like and how I have spent every day since undoing the message what feels like a chip permanently embedded in the forefront of my brain. I'm 12 years old. I cannot remember ever being so excited about anything ever. Can you remember a time when you were younger, trying something for the first time, something that ignited something within you, something so deep within you where you had that defining moment this is what I want to be when I grow up. I had been going to work with my dad every Saturday to the high fashion department store he ran downtown. Not only did we share a passion for fashion, but my dad was everything to me. It was then, one Saturday, that I came to that realization that this was what I want to be when I grow up. This was my moment, that moment. Everyone loved my dad. He was like a local celebrity as we walked down the street, sporting his shiny bald head and his handlebar mustache, which he waxed to perfection each morning. I wanted to be exactly like my dad. Well, minus the bald head, and the mustache. Growing up, I felt like my mom didn't get me like my dad. You know how you have that one parent that is your go-to more than the other? The one that's most likely to say yes? The one who fans your flame instead of extinguishing it? Being Mr. Lester's daughter, I am invited to be a part of a workshop and fashion show I am elated. This, at 13 years old, was a step towards my future. That night, my dad and I cannot wait to get home to share our excitement in the workshop with my mom. I could see already by the scowl on her face that she was not sharing any part of our excitement. How could she ignore the energy we were exuding? I felt like she had literally just stuck a pin in my hot air balloon. Later that night, she came into my room and told me that she didn't approve or like any part of what I was doing with my dad. She continued that all of this is going to make me think too much of myself build too much confidence, ultimately giving me a huge head, making me conceited, resulting in few, if any, friends and alone. I'm devastated. All I can remember is crying myself to sleep that night. The next morning, she asked my brother and I to go to the store. 
on the drive, she proceeds to tell us that she and my dad are getting divorced and that he is moving out while we are at the store. I literally couldn't breathe. I couldn't believe that this was actually happening. Not only was I not able to participate in the workshop, but that also meant that I could no longer go to work with my dad on Saturdays. My dad reaches out to invite me to dinner on a Friday night. I was then a student in high school. I don't know about you, but as much as I loved and missed my dad, I had other places to be on a Friday night. He proceeded to tell me that he would no longer pay for my books, my medical insurance, and that college would be taken care of if I stayed local. But otherwise was going to be up to me. I made the decision at that moment to never be dependent on anyone else ever again. Based on what was happening, I surmised that anything that made me happy and feel loved could be taken away, held over my head, or used against me like that. I was on a mission to make my dreams reality with or without the support and approval of my parents. All alone, I decided that day, if it's to be, it's up to me. Everything except my self-love and validation. I am now an adult, crushing my goals and dreams and making them reality. By a show of hands, I'm curious if any of you subscribed to my extracurricular clubs. People pleasers, perfectionists, overachievers, workaholics, enabling, saving men, and binging and purging, when my feelings and needs of happiness went unmet, dependent upon external resources. My father came to visit me. I was thankfully in therapy to find my self-love and take my power back and make myself happy again. My homework, to facilitate a conversation with my father. He was surprisingly open and happy and accepting, and without getting defensive, he not only apologized, he actually acknowledged the toxic, manipulative behavior. He further continued to say that his reacting was his way of controlling me, knowing that I was looking for his approval. I wasn't sure at that point if I was grateful or hurt. Either way, it was the truth, and the truth is what I needed. His apologies continued 27 years since we met that day. And now, as an adult and as a mom, I reflect back to that conversation with my mom that night. I can't help but wonder and consider who and what she might have been had she had self-love, had she known and believed that her voice deserved to be heard, and she counted all that I wanted to be and all that I wanted to achieve probably scared her. In addition, I do believe that my father's actions precipitated his fear for other reasons. The need to be accepted and acknowledged from external resources is even more prevalent now with social media and the isolation of the past year. New validation has emerged. The need for a like, a share, a comment, a follow, that you are the best in your field, the expert, the influencer, could now be considered an actual addiction. Research estimated as of 2020, 4.55 billion people engaged in social media globally. Today, that number has increased 
by an additional $400 million in just one year. When we seek validation and love and happiness from external resources, we are allowing it to be taken away. What about when you are a toddler learning to walk for the first time? We pull ourselves up on the coffee table and land on the couch and look to our parents for validation and approval because that is how we feel worthy and loved. As adults, if we did not nurture ourselves and taught that in self-love, no one can take away our feelings, we will then continue to make decisions based on other people's approval so we can get that feeling of worthy and deservingness that we all so want and desire. Think back to The Wizard of Oz. Dorothy stands before Glinda the Good Witch, and as she hands her the broomstick of the Wicked Witch of the West, Dorothy says, I did as you asked. I brought you the broomstick. Now please tell me how to get back home, to Kansas, to Aunt M. Glinda says to Dorothy, you had the power all along, my dear. Dorothy says, I did. Well, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? And Glinda simply responds, because you wouldn't have believed me, my darling. You see, we all already are worthy and deserving of love and happiness, success and wealth, or whatever it is we seek more to create in our life. Anything achieved outside of ourselves, approval, acknowledgement, acceptance, will never bring true happiness. So let me ask you this. Who is securing your oxygen mask? And if you're still searching for that one person to change your life, take a look in the mirror. Thank you.